the previous video, we saw how PyTorch can make our life easier by computing gradients automatically for us. Actually, there's another convenience layer in PyTorch, namely neural network layers. So in this video, we will see how we can use pre-made neural network layers to make our life also simpler. So while we looked at the training loop in the previous video, we haven't actually defined our logistic regression model yet. So for that, we are going to use something called torch.nn.linear to implement this first part of the regression model. And this is actually something we will use a lot later on when we implement deep neural networks. So in other words, torch.nn Dot linear is the neural network layer that computes this weighted sum. So let's take a look at a code example to see how nn.linear works. So suppose we have this linear layer or the layer to compute the weighted sum with two input features, x1 and x2. So we set in features equal to two. And we have one output feature in this case because we have one weighted sum. So after initializing this linear layer, it will have a weight vector which we can access with dot weight. And we can see the weight vector consists of two features because we defined two input features. And if we use dot bias, we can also check out the bias unit. You can see though that these are small random numbers instead of zeros that we used before in the perceptron. That's actually because it's best practice to use small random numbers when we train, let's say, new network models. Notice also that I set this random number seed above. The purpose of this is just to make sure that when you execute this code, each time you get the same results. But in real life, if you train a neural network, this is of course not required. So this is the overall concept of the linear layer. So it essentially defines the weight vector for us and initializes also the bias unit. So this is how we initialize the linear layer. How do we now compute the weighted sum? So recall from earlier videos how we compute the weighted sum. It's essentially the weighted sum between x and w plus the bias unit. So if we have a single training example, x is a vector, and we also have this weight vector consisting of the same number of weights as the input consists of features. So we can express this via a dot product or matrix multiplication. So how we can then compute the net input using this linear layer is by a matrix multiplication between w and x and adding b to it. Notice also that this code example uses something called dot detach to detach these variables from the computation graph. The whole reason we are doing this is because this is actually not the intended use case of the linear layer, because this is also way too tedious. But there is actually a way simpler way of using the linear layer. And that is by calling linear on the inputs directly, as we can see here. And also, as we see here, the results are exactly the same, except this way of computing the net input is way more convenient. So we just saw how we compute the net input for a single training example. However, you might now wonder, how does the linear layer handle mini batches? So suppose here we have a mini batch consisting of three training examples with two features each. So to compute the net input or weighted sum here, we would do matmol on x and the transpose of the weight vector, as we covered in a previous lecture on matrix multiplication. And of course, we would also add the bias unit then. So, and this is also something the linear layer takes care of for us. We don't have to worry about the matrix multiplication at all. All we have to do is to call linear on the input. And if the input is a batch of multiple training examples, everything will be taken care of. So we just saw how we can use torch.nn.linear to take care of the net input in the logistic regression model. There's also a convenient function torch.sigmoid to compute then the activation of the logistic regression model. And we also already saw that there's a binary cross entropy function in PyTorch that takes care of the loss computation for us. So now we have all the building blocks we need to implement a logistic regression model and train it in PyTorch. Next, we will go over a concrete code example and actually do exactly that.